Welcome back to Secret Weapons. We, we're in a studio now, let's not dwell on it. So last week on Instagram, I put out a call for some questions for another Q&A video. And a bunch of you guys responded with a bunch of great questions. And so we are going to use this opportunity and this table full of cool stuff to answer as many of those as I can be bothered to answer. We're gonna start off with an easy one. The question is, what do I love about the mood pedal by Chase Plus Audio by Heavy Bones? By the way, we have space to do like graphic drop-ins right now. Welcome. I'm gonna give you two things that I love about this because it's a two-sided pedal. Um, on the Drollo micro looper side, I really like the stretch mode and then using the clock to kind of send it at various pitches into a big washy stereo reverb like the Mercury 7. I think that's a great combination for creating kind of big, strange, like kind of melodically shifted pads. And on the Old Blood side, I really love slip set at unity pitch backwards. It's just kind of a really great sounding reverse delay, but like it only happens once. And it's it's just a cool momentary piece that is very, very engaging. So uh, this is what those two things sound like. We're gonna use my phone from now on because names can be hard. Uh, Joshua, Joshua wants to know, recommendations for a noise glitch weird pedal for a beginner. Once again, the Chase Plus Audio Mood. This may seem like a tough thing to recommend to a beginner, but the reason I think it's actually a really good kind of glitch pedal for somebody to dive into is because it does a bunch of different things with kind of relatively simple uh, parameters. At the, at the core of this pedal, you really do have a three parameter wet mode and a three parameter looper. But the looper challenges you to kind of like redefine how you interpret looping and how you would use it in a context. And the delay, the reverb and the slip on this all sound really good. So if you're trying to get into some kind of weird glitchy ambient stuff, this is a good, good pedal to start out on. Somebody wants to know, Cabzus versus Iridium. If you had to choose one, which would it be? We're not gonna show this person's name in this one because I'm about to kind of trash on the question a little bit. Not his question specifically, but kind of the, the ethos behind it, which is I get a lot of, I get a lot of requests to compare two things that I use frequently that occupy the same space. And I just find it to be a not interesting intellectually train of thought and not a conversation worth really engaging with. And the reason is, take the Cabzus and the Iridium for instance. These are both cabinet simulators, but there are massive pluses and minuses to each of them. We'll start with the Iridium. The Iridium sounds incredible. They both sound amazing, but the Iridium has a full amp stack in it. You can play an AC30, you can play a Marshall, you can play a Fender amp in there. You have a room control, which I think is one of the most valuable pieces of any amp sim I've ever used. And you have a strong all-in-one solution right here. You can just plug your guitar straight into this in a pinch and it will sound amazing. Now switching over to the Cab Zeus, you have no kind of front-end amp stack, but what you do have is 
far more IRs, you have the ability to use unmatched pairs of cabinets, and you have XLR outs, which can be really, really useful in a pinch. And it also sounds amazing if you pair it with a good preamp, like the Benson preamp or the Petty John Mark II, or even my old mainstay, which was the DRV and the Condor. This is incredibly versatile. This has things that this doesn't have. You actually can get a really good reverb out of this thing, like a real reverb with like long trails. And this one actually gives you the ability to kind of simulate two separate amps by having two different cabinet options with separate mic controls for each of them. They're different. They have different purposes. They have different strengths and different weaknesses. And I find that, yes, in this world, there are pedals that are worse and there are pedals that are better, but I generally don't use the ones that are worse. I won't reach for anything that I find to be worse than what I already have, which is why when I have two of these things that get used frequently and I get asked for which is better, the conversation is instead, which is better for you, which is better for me, which is better for the situation I am currently operating within. And, and that varies frequently and wildly depending on the pedal board I'm building, the place I'm playing, and what I'm trying to accomplish. And so I don't find the conversation to be worth having. I think it's instead to just say, well, look at what you're using, look at what you want to accomplish, and pick whichever one is best for you. I hope that wasn't too mean. We'll see. Ty60 wants to know what bands I'm in and what my gigs are. Well, it's 2020, so there are no gigs anymore. They're all gone. Uh, we hope they come back eventually. Uh, so no gigs. But I do have a new project called Almanor, and I just dropped a lead single from it called Rapture uh, just a week ago, very recently. Um, we'll put a little bit of the chorus right here. I am a sucker for Rapture Reading minds with nothing new to say so if you like what you hear there, uh, you can go listen to it on Spotify, on Apple Music, on Bandcamp, basically anywhere. There's even a music video here on this channel. If you haven't watched it yet, how dare you? I'm kidding, but if you if you liked it, please give it a listen. Um, the links will be, you know, the description. You get it. Rui asks, I have a brother's but need a sweeter low gain overdrive. Can the DRV do that? Condor, perhaps. So first of all, Brothers is a great low gain overdrive. I am confused by the question. I do find that pairing the Brothers with Condor can be really helpful in just kind of making this a much more versatile pedal. So I would definitely recommend looking into that if you like the Condor, but I don't find the Condor to be my favorite overdrive on its own. I find it to be a much better clean preamp and kind of otherwise sound design tool. I also don't know what sweeter means. It's not a term that I use when describing overdrives or dirt in general. So it's hard for me to kind of understand what that is, but we will take a moment and we will look at the 1981 DRV and the Benson preamp. There's, there's a battery in there. I always forget there's a battery in this thing. These are both amazing low gain drives. They're very different. This is a lot more present. This is a lot more dramatic in the way that it scoops uh, low mids and kind of brightens things up. And this is a much more mellow kind of, I'm gonna say soothing almost. So. Let's listen to both of these. also asks, how do you balance your tone in guitar pots, pedal knobs, and amp settings? So I got a bunch of questions in this uh, round about 
how I mix, how I produce, what my workflow is for getting guitars from the guitar and the pedals in front of me into my DAW. So let's stack all of those questions into this segment right now. How I get to a clean guitar tone that I really love, and by clean, I mean, I should say dry guitar tone that I really love, is three key pieces on my pedal board and then some stuff in my DAW. This is kind of my, I'm almost always using it set up when I'm recording guitars. You have the diamond compressor, usually set pretty gentle. It's a pretty gentle compressor anyways. The Benson preamp, also set pretty gentle. I find that it just kind of smooths things out in a very soothing and beautiful way. And the Strymon Iridium, because we've talked about this. It sounds great. It's a great, great, great uh, amp in a box. But I will then send to my DAW, which is the Universal Audio Luna DAW, because I'm using my Apollo Twin to record everything, which has great preamps in it. But I will also use the Unison preamp feature in the DAW, and that will be a Neve 1073 preamp, which I use that to kind of get some additional grit and headroom and kind of tonal color and get some tonal color out of that. The 1073 feels like it just enhances things a little bit. I will usually then use either a Teletronics LA-2A compressor or an 1176 compressor to kind of bring everything back down. I will compress more dramatically in my DAW with my compressor than I will with my pedal board compressor. And so that is kind of the core difference between the two. And uh, we will now run through what all those things sound like. What I'm gonna do instead is take these three and record them direct in, and then we will do it again with my 1073 and my LA-2A in play in my DAW. So we're gonna take this one in three stages. We'll do stage one is Iridium by itself, nothing in the DAW and nothing in front of it. Now we have our Benson and our Diamond Compressor on the front end. And this is into the Neve 1073 preamp uh, in place of any other preamping in our DAW. Here it is again with the LA-2A added in. <laughs> TSC Sounds wants to know, silly question, are all of your pedals and stuff sponsored? I actually don't think this is a silly question. I think this is something worth really discussing. Uh, and there's maybe not always enough transparency on the side of the gear community. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do is sponsored to varying extents. A fair amount of the gear that I receive is comped uh, in exchange for it being used uh, on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever. And with a fair amount of that stuff, I'm being paid to make a demo on it. And that's not always the case. And that's not true for everything that you see here or that you see on my channel. I, still buy a fair amount of stuff just out of the desire to have specific pieces of gear. A lot of it comes from the fact that a builder or a company saw something I was doing with a similar piece of gear or on my channel in general and thought that it would be a good fit, that they thought I would enjoy what they were making, or they thought that it would be a good opportunity for them to get a demo or something that kind of puts the best foot forward of that pedal out in a good way. And I think that what I find to be very important in that process is making sure that when I do my demo and reviews that I am very forthright about the fact that I, everything I put out there is my honest opinion. I will be critical of pedals that I think deserve criticism in the areas where I do criticize them in the same way that I will praise things in the areas where they deserve it. And I try to be pretty clear about those things. There are pedals on this table that I have reviewed that I love and adore and have things that I would have changed about them that I feel that I put those in a lot of those reviews as well. A good example would be the Therme. I wish that there was a time knob instead of the glide because I just don't have a use for the glide. Um, I understand why people like it, but it's not for me. In the same way that um, 
I talked about the fact that V Mercury 7, when you hit the swell button, it sums to mono, which is not what you want out of a end of chain pedal like this. But the reason you won't hear a ton of critique coming from me on this channel is not because I'm being paid to paint things favorably. It's because, I mean, you look at what I have in front of me, this stuff is pretty great. I say no to a fair amount of gear that I just find that I'm not going to gel with in the long run or that I don't think I'm going to be able to get the sounds out that I feel are worthy of kind of talking about or having a conversation about. I only really want to use stuff that I find engaging and interesting and that is high quality. And that's why all this stuff is here. And that's also because I've been very privileged and lucky to work with companies that I really like, both as people and as designers and builders. Like, this stuff's great. I mean, we, we talk a lot about the fact that we're in kind of a golden age of gear and, or at the very least of stomp boxes. And I think that that's probably very true. All of this might be a totally unnecessary tangent. I just think that it's worth having the conversation of like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes reviews come because I'm being paid to make them. Sometimes it's just out of a love for the piece of gear that I'm using. Sometimes it's just because I need something on the channel. And so I'll reach for something that I like knowing that I can talk about it. But yeah, all that to say, a lot of it, yes, a lot of it is sponsored, but none of my opinions are bought and none of it is colored by the will or the desire of the people who make this stuff. Chris wants to know if plugging into the headphone jack on the Iridium is a good solution for quiet at home practice. More specifically, he wants to know if it sounds good. I've had this conversation with some friends of mine. Uh, I don't know why, and I don't know if it's in my head, but I've heard it from other people as well. The headphone jack on this is amazing. Like the headphone jack on this thing might sound better than the actual outputs on top. And I don't know why, obviously it's not a big deal because the outputs on top sound amazing. You've heard all the videos that I've done with these and the fact that all of the clips you're hearing in this video involve the Iridium, but there is like a fidelity and a, I don't know what it is. But the headphone jack on this thing sounds amazing. So if you're in the market for an all-in-one amp thing with a good headphone jack, this is the one. That was not gonna pull focus, I apologize. What is my favorite brother's sound? I love the brothers. This thing was for a long time my favorite drive and then kind of fell out of favor with me. And I mean, you know, I have more drives now than I ever expected to. I, mean, I get that there's only like three on this table, but you know, there's a lot of good ones. But I found that I've been going back to the brothers more frequently recently and I find that my favorite settings on this thing are the same as my favorite settings from when I first got this thing all, whatever it was, two years ago? How, how old is this thing, three years? And that is overdrive on the JFET side, clean boost on the IC side, tone mixed to taste, uh, gain mixed to taste set in parallel with the mix right around noon. It sounds so good. You have all the clarity from the clean boost. You have all of that amazing JFET drive texture from the JFET side. It's really good. Let's listen to it. Oh, you also want to know how the Benson is cranked. So let's do that really quick. It's that battery, sorry. Okay, we're gonna do like a two birds thing right now. Uh, someone wants to know favorite ambient noisemaker right now. And somebody else wants to know microcosm review, question mark, exclamation point. That's an interrobang, right? Those are the questions. 
This is my favorite ambient noise maker right now. This thing is wild. It's, it's so much, I guess is how I would describe it. Um, hologram killed it on this. It is deep, it is confusing, it's amazing, it's inspiring. I love it desperately. It's very good. There will be a review coming on it. I can't do it yet because I have a combination of the fact that I'm quite busy and also that this is so much work to do anything that resembles a worthwhile comprehensive review. But this is my favorite ambient noise maker right now. The reverb on it is incredible even though you can't use it on the dry signal, which is a bummer. Flashback to being upfront about negative aspects of pedals. But what the reverb does on the things in this thing is amazing. The looper on it's great. The sounds on it are like a trillion and they're great. So uh, let's just roll through some weird sounds with this thing really quick. Next up is how am I using the specular Tempest right now? 
By the way, it's impressive that I grabbed this. I'm looking at the backs of all my pedals. So this is really an exercise in how well do I know my gear? Oh, and the answer to the question is plate reverb. The 70s plate in the Specular Tempest is so, so good. It's, I realize I'm doing that kind of breathy, so good thing a lot in this video, but like I'm surrounded by stuff that I really like right now. And it's kind of cool to be in a studio space talking about it. Um, it's amazing. There's a lot of great stuff in this thing. Spatium's great. Uh, we're not gonna joke about whether or not I know how to pronounce that because I do it in every video. Um, I don't think that counts. Uh, the delay modes in this thing are great. The tape delay is great, but but the, the 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 plate, but the plate reverb in this thing is stunning. It sounds so good. So let's listen to some plate reverb really quick. <laughs> Tim Woody wants to know, why never try Stomp? Um, because, first of all, I have. Uh, if you go on my Instagram from like a month or two ago, uh, there is a series of videos where I use an HX Stomp as a amp simulator kind of thing uh, in place of the Iridium because I had loaned the Iridium out in exchange for the Stomp for a couple weeks. But to answer the question of why never try Stomp, because I don't like the user interface. I don't like the workflow that the Line 6 stuff operates within. I don't like menu diving and I don't like the amount of work I have to put in to pull a sound up. I don't find it to be something that inspires me to pick up a guitar. This inspires me to pick up a guitar. This stuff, even, even stuff like Zoya, which is you know pretty complicated, it inspires me to pick up the guitar and write something. It inspires me to make things. I find that I look at it and I just would rather be doing something else. And I don't like that. And even though it sounds great, I'm not willing to sacrifice that when I have things that I like more that I think sound as good. Treasured Ike wants to know, and that's how we're insisting on pronouncing it in this video. Treasured Ike wants to know, is there a particular order of pedals slash effects that you mess with to come up with ambient tones? And the answer is, depends on the day. This stuff is all a factor. I tend to think that stacking in the correct order is very important. I think that generally stereo, de stereo delays into stereo reverbs and not the other way around helps to keep the mix clean. Um, I like to take as much of a less is more approach as I can, especially, I think maybe the biggest piece of advice I can give is do your best to really nail down your dry tone. When I go back and listen to early songs and videos and pieces that I put on Instagram, the number one thing I notice is that I'm using way too much reverb because I'm compensating for the fact that I don't think that my dry guitar tone sounds very good. And I was able to get some good tones out of just that really washy thing, but it just wasn't what I wanted. And I found that I started enjoying writing and I could start writing a much more varied style of music while still being kind of in this kind of ambient adjacent kind of world by really dialing in that guitar tone. And so see earlier in the video where we talked about stacking the right dry effects together and your, and getting your gain staging right in your DAW. But after that, uh, yeah, modulation, then delay, then reverb. Sometimes the other way around. It depends on what you're going for. C wants to know about the build quality of the Harmony Silhouette. It is a very good guitar. Um, I, I love this thing. I've been using it a ton since I got it in October. Um, obviously you see it on videos that I do all the time. I use it in my reviews. I use it on everything between this, my Jaguar and my Jennings. I almost never play anything else. This is definitely one of my two main guitars. In terms of the build quality, it's sturdy. The neck feels great. The tuners are super reliable. This thing, I never have to tune it. The pickups in this thing sound amazing. These hand wound gold foil mini humbuckers are just really, really good. They're very, very, very good. But yeah, it's a great guitar, it feels sturdy. Um, the only thing would be, I get some weird kind of 60 cycle hum noise with this guitar. Uh, even when I roll my volume back, I still get it until I roll the tone back as well. So I think that's an issue with the internal wiring or some sort of grounding. 
I don't know what it is. I've never actually opened it to investigate. I've just kind of worked around it because it's not that bad. But it's literally the only thing that isn't perfect about this guitar, in my opinion. I mean, you know, I would love like a Jag style trim on this thing, but you know, in terms of build quality, that's the only issue I've got. Avery wants to know what the best delay I have played is. I wonder what it could be. I wonder what it could be. I'm looking, I'm looking at my, my monitor over there. Uh, there's nothing to say. Uh, the Chase Bliss Audio Thermae is the best delay ever made. I will fight anybody in the street who says otherwise. It is my baby. I love it dearly. In all seriousness, it's just, it's so good. It's the low pass filter that does the tone control on this thing is the single best delay tone filtering dial I have ever had in my entire life. Chase Bliss nailed it on that. This is so good. It's so good that I hope that when we go to a top-down camera right now that I can actually do things. I've been meaning to send this in for repairs because I've used it so much that I've kind of jostled some internal stuff in it and it needs to be loved on back at the shop. But uh, assuming it works right now, we're gonna go to a top-down thing. Otherwise, just go watch here. Link's right there. Go watch my uh, Thermae review that I did. I, I rant and rave about how good it is in that video, so. You're an adult, you can find it. Bad Bad Owl wants to know where I would put the microcosm in a single pedal board chain. And he's asking it like that because he knows that I did a crazy, overly ambitious parallel stereo uh, effects board uh, a couple weeks ago, where this was its own entire chain into the Cab Zeus, which was really cool and uh, allowed me to do texture stuff that exists alongside the rest of my pedal board. But where would I put this in its own singular pedal chain? Like if this has to exist with all this other stuff somewhere in the stream of signal flow. That's the stream of signal flow, I don't know why. It's honestly a hard question to answer because this thing does so many different things so well. Uh, I got it for the kind of ambient looping sample and morph kind of stuff that it does, but it also has a lot of really amazing dry effects stuff. And what makes that tough is if you put a lot of reverb or other effects that will dampen your attack and your decay and all that. It can kind of make the microcosm's job harder in terms of figuring out where your samples are and building off of them. So I would probably say it's too good in stereo to put it in mono. So I would say at the end of my mono chain, right before the beginning of my stereo chain, but knowing that I would be turning off whatever delays reverbs or like the shallow water in front of it if I was gonna make good use of this as more than just a looper. That's probably where I would have to put it. Dylan wants to know how the headroom on the Iridium is and how it handles loud boosts and drives. The headroom on the Iridium is very good. Let's put a very loud pedal in front of it and see how it does. And finally, Twisted Rand, Tywistrand, Tywistrand, Tywistrand wants to know how I am utilizing slash enjoying the Signal Blender from Old Blood Noise Endeavors. I have found myself using what I think is now lovingly referred to universally in the gear community as the Offling method, which is where you just put these two pedals in parallel with one another. 
uh, and you use them as separate loopers that exist alongside one another without interacting. I would typically put the Condor next to the Mood right here to kind of tame some clock noise using the low pass filter and accentuate some low end stuff because I like to use when I'm doing this, the Mood as a more of a bass driven thing, but we'll make do with what we have because the Mood is not here in the studio. So um, we'll put this stuff directly in front of a big stereo reverb and you can see kind of what the approach there is. And before we go to that, I think this is the last question of the video. So we're going to kind of go out with a parallel looper jam kind of thing. But um, thank you for joining me here in the studio. If you've got any other questions, you can leave them in the comments down below or follow me on Instagram so you can see the next time I put something like this up with the call for questions. Until next time, thanks for watching. Rapture, the new single from my new project, Almanor, is out now everywhere, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever Deezer is. But you can listen to it, you can stream it, you can buy it on Bandcamp, whatever you want to do. I encourage you to go check that out. And like I said, follow me on Instagram to be here for the next time we do one of these. Uh, until next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you.